All right, welcome to our first healing circle. Uh, generally, these will start with the facilitator, which today is myself, dropping us in with a gift. So that could be, you know, poetry, song, dance, an invitation for us to stand up, which I'm inviting all of us to do right now. So our invitation is to stand up. <laughs> and we're going to have one. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, of course. And that's for every one of these sessions. For this one, we're going to do a little bit of bouncing and a little bit of breathing just to shake the energy out, shift off. Um, we just went through a solstice. There's a lot of power on a solstice. A lot of things change during these energetic periods. Um, and right now we're going through that together still. So right, we're going to shake that energy, allow old patterns to move out of us, new patterns to move in. So just opening yourself up. I'm just going to do this for a few minutes. And then as you kind of bounce around, taking big, full, deep breaths. And this is when we're moving out of any thoughts we're having, any preconceived ideas of who we are, what we thought we wanted to bring, anything like that. And we're just going to focus on the breath, bringing more oxygen into our bodies, and then moving that breath throughout our bodies. That is it. Very simple. Breathing in, feeling that energy come in, and move that energy throughout our bodies as we shake it around and breathe. So we're just going to do this for about two or three minutes, and we'll keep going. Another reminder to not get lost in any thoughts, to come back to the breath, come back to the energy that breath is bringing into your bodies, and then feeling that breath and energy move throughout our bodies, opening ourselves up, moving anything that's stuck, no longer serving us, making space for new. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And if you're not already, you know, another invitation to take full deep breaths, really opening up the lungs, a bigger breath than you're used to taking, extending the breath, and really feeling your lungs expand. Feel the potential for it to bring more energy into your bodies as your lungs expand and are bringing in more oxygen. So taking big deep breaths, breathe that out. And now we can shift up our breathing to bring this back into the body. And if you want to do this, it's a big breath in and then a nice, massive, loud, gurgly, weird, whatever it wants to be, breath out. <sighs> All right. Uh, you can keep breathing. You can keep moving if that's what you want to do, because what I'm going to start this off with is a quick recap of our journey from my perspective so far. Um, what brought us to Healing Circles? Where have we been? Kind of giving us a little bit of context to what this is all for. Um, so to help you with that, I've got some slides too. Some of you might have seen this if you've already watched the introduction to Healing Circles that's okay. I'm just going to give a brief introduction to this. And after I go over the introduction to healing circles and what this structure is and what we're about to do here today, there'll be one period where anyone give feedback on that. So if you have any ideas of how we can improve this, um, if you're intuiting or feeling any ways that we can have a better circle and structure here, please share that after the presentation. And then we're going to actually go through doing it. Okay. So what do you see here? Regeneration is healing. So, you know, 
ever since we've got started in seeds, the main purpose has been how do we create financial economic governance, you know, coordination systems to regenerate ourselves, the work that we're a part of, et cetera. Um, so it's always and always will be about regeneration and that process that is never ending of creating more diversity, more life and more vitality within us and the world that we're inhabiting. So what does that actually mean? You know, regeneration right now is really about healing, you know, so healing some of the wounds that have been caused by the structures that we've been a part of, that we were born into. Right. So that's really where I think we need to start and why this is becoming so prevalent today. And maybe we didn't start with this before. Um, is because we kind of ignored this, in my opinion, at least the circles that I was mostly a part of within Seeds. It was a startup culture. It was really taking a lot of the mentality and stories of the culture we're leaving behind and applying it because we were building tools. We were making sure we have the technology. We were getting shit done. You know, excuse my language. You know, that was the point. When people came here and got triggered or had their emotional breakdowns or, you know, demonstrated the wounds that we're having, Oftentimes there wasn't space for it, and it was seen as not part of the journey. But if the whole point is regeneration, then that is a critical part of our journey, and that's what I'm inviting us to kind of reorient around. So what does regeneration actually mean in the context I'm using it here? Um, there's four different areas. One, self. This is the most obvious, but you know we're also everything so when we think of self like we are earth but we'll get into that later we're thinking self as in the current body we're inhabiting we get this so there's the journey of healing our own self the traumas we've experienced in this lifetime you know uh, so that's a really obvious one so when we're getting into the healing circle component of this these are the four areas we can talk about so if what's most alive for you is the healing of the self right now you're going through a lot of personal stuff maybe that's what you want to share but we're also healing family. So this is our relationship, our wives, our kids, our partners, our son, you know, everything, right? So this is our blood family, but also our chosen family. But we're also extending the family out to what's called a kin's domain or a family domain or a homestead, whatever you want to call that. But this is the non-human organisms and beings that live around where we live. So our gardens, you know, our friends outside, the birds and squirrels and beavers and everything else. So this is our family that we are talking about. So when we're talking about healing, you might share up, you know, I've been learning some rural tricks in the garden, and this is how I grew a cucumber the size of my face. You know, I'm really excited about that, and I did that. So that might be your share or whatever. So we can talk about healing our families. We could talk about healing our bioregion, because this is really where it gets into it. What air are you breathing? You know, how are you drinking the waters of your streams? How are you making your habitat, you know, more resistant to fire, etc.? You know, that's on the bioregional scale. So it's extending the family, which is the homestead, your domain, maybe the one hectare around where you're living. And now the bioregion is the bioregion that you're inhabiting. So this was very common in many cultures where they said, who are you? And they'd often start with this worldview. They'd say, oh, well, I'm from this bioregion and this is my family and this is who I am. So they had this whole worldview when they introduced themselves. You know, I'm from this river and this mountain, this forest. So when we talk about healing a bioregion, this is like, how are we making our rivers drinkable again? How are we coordinating to localize all the food that's produced in our bioregion, et cetera? So this is what we're sharing as we're healing in this area. And then finally, and this is an example of what we're doing here today, is the Earth, Global Tribe. You know, everyone on this call is coming in from all over the Earth. Um, we pick times that are very Earth-friendly so that we can all participate. And this is the healing of that global tribe. This is where we're learning together. And of course, we all are part of Earth, just as much as every microorganism living on us is part of our bodies. And if, you know, our bodies die, they all die. You know, we're kind of all part of the same story here. Um, so this is the four lenses to what regeneration is and what we can talk about in those healing circles. So it doesn't have to just be I'm healing myself and this is what I'm going through, which that's a big part of it. Definitely share that. That's what's most alive. But it could also be, you know, I'm having a global organization that I'm a part of, and we're having, a, you know, a challenge in our journey. And this is what I want to share today. All right. So the healing part of it, which is the healing part of these circles, when we go through, each person would have some time, maybe three to five. Oh, actually, let me go to the next slide and you'll see a little bit more of this. Okay, taking a step back, you know, here's the invitation, a multiplayer healing journey. That's what we're all here to do, is to do this process together. Because as we're going through this and we're learning, you know, we get to share with each other and I can learn, you know, maybe a little bit selfish here, 
I'm really interested in learning what people are going through. Are you having some challenges with your partner and you're having some breakthroughs like that might help me and the challenges I'm having right now? And we tend to find this, that the stuff any one of us is going through, a lot of us is going through. Okay. So that's what it's a multiplayer healing journey. And it comes from a lot of informed doctors that just basically are saying what we already know, which is in order to actually be healthy, we really need to focus on all four of these lenses. Okay. All right, so then what is one of these circles? First and foremost, I wanna point out that the facilitator, which is what I'm doing here today, can be anyone. And I'm really inviting you know, as many people as want to, to play these roles and host different flavors of these circles. So I'll be presenting, you know, one particular flavor. That's, you know, what I'll be doing. Great. I would love to get there's way more facilitators offering a whole bunch of different flavors. And that's what we really need. And that's what diversity is about, is having different ways of being able to show up and do this process. Um, so that's what I'm also introducing here today is the gratitude DAO. So this is a structure we've created um, that people can show up, hold a role, and actually earn some tokens for holding these circles and doing stuff. So we'll be creating a game around this process as well. Okay, so how does it actually run? Um, as I mentioned already, it starts with a healing offering to drop people into the space and for that facilitator to be able to practice their gift and to be able to show up. And for, of course, all of us to be able to receive that gift. It can be anything. It could be poetry. It could be that thing I just did with us today. It could be a breathwork session, whatever. Whatever you feel like is gonna help people connect with themselves and each other more, offer that gift. Then there'll be that healing share. So this is what I was just speaking to where we'll go around in a circle and very critically, there's no responses. So everyone can feel very safe to speak about whatever they'd like to speak about, knowing that no one's gonna you know, call them wrong or say that they're, you know, try to give them their opinion or anything like that. Uh, we highly encourage people to reach out individually, one-on-one, -on -one, if something really inspired you and you wanted to go deeper, um, because another part of this is connecting with each other, building real relationships and you know, the, the beautiful part of being human. Um, another big part is just that witnessing is as we have circles and we're sharing the healing we're going through, being seen in that healing has a very, you know, chemical and physical process that helps us go through that healing. So being seen in our journey oftentimes is all that's needed for us to find the healing that we're needing. Uh, so that's a big part of that healing circle. Okay, so we all go around in a circle. Everyone gets a chance to share. Great, it comes to the end. Then we go around in a circle one more time, and this is the gratitude share. So this is two sides of this. It's things that you've done that you feel like, you know, you're happy and you're wanting to celebrate it. So it could be, I planted my food forest in my backyard. That was healing my bioregion. I want to celebrate that. Or I hosted, a... can anyone hear that? Or is it being blocked out? No. Nope. Excellent. Uh, life is bringing noise. Anyway. So this is where you could celebrate an achievement you made. You feel like other people might be grateful for. So this is where you get to show up and say, hey, I made a video. I wrote an article. You know, I hosted a seeds gathering where we built a food forest or community garden in my bioregion. Whatever it is you're doing that serves the regenerative renaissance that we're a part of here, this is when you get to share that. So it serves a lot of functions. We get to hear about what other people are doing, hear about the progress that's going on. That's awesome for us. But you also get a chance to be recognized for what you brought. Simultaneously, you can share gratitude to other people. So if you don't want to, maybe you didn't do a bunch of stuff yourself, but you noticed somebody else did, then you can bring awareness to what they've done. And you can you know, share what someone else has accomplished. So this is where you can share what you or other people or both have accomplished. So that the final point of these meetings is to sow seeds. So we have this seeds currency. That's been what we've been building so far in this community. And the main question was, how do we get this currency out through our whole movement so we can start coordinating more effectively? We've always been asking that question of how do we distribute this currency for people who are growing our movement and doing beautiful things? So this is how we do it, is people share what they're grateful for. And then after, and I'll show you how to do this later, you can actually go to Discord and soon hopefully the wallet, and you can share gratitude to those people that you were grateful for. So as people shared in the gratitude circle, and there's like seven different shares or whatever it is, and you're like, these are all awesome. I want to acknowledge these, then you can actually do that, which then sends them some tokens, which then sends them some seeds. So this is our way of kind of building a financial and economic system on top of gratitude and this beautiful healing process. Um, okay, a few more things to speak to here, and then I'll be done and we can talk about this. 
one of the big things we're looking for is meetings as medicine. So it's right here in the center. And this, this looks two ways, at least from my point of view, and I'd love to hear others. And that's if you leave the call feeling full and, you know, full of life and love, and you're just like, wow, that was amazing. I have more energy. That's a good sign that it was you no know, medicine for you. If you feel the call feeling incredibly triggered and frustrated and some strong emotion, that's also a really good sign that this is medicine for you. <laughs> Because that's the other part of what we're going through is, you know, triggers are helping us. And this is what, you know, Gabor Mate and other people are bringing. So this is me just parroting their, you know, wisdom. Is when we're getting triggered, that trigger is attached to something bigger. There's some ammunition, you know, just like a trigger on an actual weapon. It's the smallest part of that weapon. The bigger part is the actual weapon, the ammunition, the explosive, like, and that part is in us. So when we get triggered, it's actually an invitation to become aware of what is actually already in us that's being triggered. And bringing awareness to it is the healing process as well. So we're not trying to run away from conflict and getting triggered or even seeing that as a bad thing. That's also part of the healing journey. Okay, so what's not a healing meeting is a meeting that you get off of and you're just kind of like bored and you don't know why you're there and you're feeling uninspired. Then that's a good sign that it's not what we're trying to achieve. <laughs> in which case... There's a massive invitation to bring that voice. So when that comes up, we bring that awareness. Hey, this meeting is no longer being alive for me. And my needs aren't being met. You know, that's also part of the healing process for us to speak up for what we need. And we really need to work on practice on this because if we're talking about building decentralized, democratic, you know, we're building systems that are governed by us, governed by the people. If we're not wanting to show up and bring our wisdom and bring our truth, and we don't know how to do that because we're too traumatized, then those democratic systems aren't going to work very well, right? So part of this healing is to heal ourselves so that we can be healthy parts of a democratic, self-organized system, right? Um, last things here, as you see it at the bottom, oh, why did they go away? I know the big part of what we're doing here is to unite with our tribes. So there's a big movement within Seeds right now to have physical villages in real life places in the world where people are actually moving their families to and actually, you know, living and meeting their needs together. You know, how do we find each other? So these circles are also designed for this, for helping us to connect with people we resonate with, find other beautiful souls, and potentially even move in to villages and such together. Okay, so uniting with our tribes, healing together, of course, we've talked about that co-creating together. So this is growing our movement. And this happens in the gratitude share where we're doing stuff and celebrating each other for doing stuff. And then of course, to celebrate, have fun and enjoy this beautiful journey that we're on together. Okay, so that was a lot. I was trying to do it really quickly. Um, now I would love to open it up, put your hand up if you would like to share. Um, and I would love to have hear any feedback that people have on this process or any ways that we might be able to evolve it, change it, or any reflections you might be feeling inspired to share. Ayo, and maybe you can start off by also saying your name one more time. Um, yes, it's Ayo, um, full name Ayo Mire Kutunde. I'm Nigerian American, hence the very long name. Um, I think I want to start with some feedback and it's largely that I think even in the structure of the session with the slide with the four four part agenda um, and with the end goal being to sow seeds I feel like the healing circles once again still takes on that startup energy um, and not necessarily in a bad way I think it can be useful I think as you said being in startup energy gets shit done um, but specifically when you're working with trauma and with healing. Um, I think it's important that, like, so I'm looking at the healing share part where everyone in a circle goes and talks. So I think that can be really exclusive for people who, for instance, may want to join and take part and be part of the energy, but maybe they're currently experiencing something that they're not ready to talk about yet. Um, and I think asking people, asking every single person sort of, you know, as an expectation before even coming to the session, it's going to have a lot of people not wanting to come to the session, even though it might be beneficial for them and trigger them in a good way, like you suggested, right? But they're going to cut themselves off because of the expectation that they have going in. Um, and I, I love the inclusion of the gratitude share. Um, I think I love also just the inclusion of even using this as a way to sow seeds. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't do that. But I think when we look at the larger goal, what I'm sensing from seeds is a need to not just 
heal ourselves, but heal the relationships within seats themselves so that you guys like working with each other. Um, people look forward to working with each other. Um, and I think that if, if that is the goal, then I would say that the structure might flow a little bit differently, for instance. Um, and I, I'm not sure what y'all, if y'all agree with that, obviously you guys have been here and experienced all these calls that I have not and know what people are experiencing. Um, but I personally just, I think it, it's very much similar to how Bell Hooks, even MLK, they talk about the need for a love ethic and all movements and revolutionary movements where if you're trying to build resilient communities, you need the people that are in them to really love each other. Um, and not just in like a love and light ha ha way, but like in a very serious, like I will do things for you, I will move you know mountains for you. Um, and I think that getting people to that point is the work of circles like this for sure. It's my two cents. Um, more than two cents. Uh, it was beautiful and that's exactly what we're looking for. And just full clarity here, part of my healing journey is moving from the patriarchal society I was born into and encultured into, and I was really into, um, and trying to balance that. So please help me continue to round those edges. Um, so your feedback is most welcome. Um, and this is also why I really want to double down on the idea of multiple facilitators holding spaces, because ultimately no one's going to hold the space that's you know going to be the healing everyone needs. That's not how diversity or regeneration works, and that would be super boring. So uh, we're highly encouraging there to be a whole lot of different explorations of how we can hold space like this. Um, but that's incredible feedback for me, and I would love to know more about how you might do it otherwise. And if you don't have those feedback right now, then um, whenever it comes through, that would be great to hear. Um, does anyone else have any more feedback or thoughts on the structure? Well, I oh, maybe I can pass it back to you for just a second. Did you have any suggestions on how you might change the structure? A few. Um... I actually wanted to, so there's this book, Emergent Strategy by Agent Marie Brown that I wanted to sit with because she has this like huge library of facilitation suggestions for people in movements. Um, and I haven't finished reading it yet, but <laughs> I think as I was looking through it, I was like, wow, I got to bring this to see if they feel like they'll really be helpful. So I can share, I can read it, finish reading it and then summarize and like Slack, you know, DM the discord with some of the takeaways there. Um, but in general, one of the things that she suggests is um, that when you're pre allotting time in a meeting that like um, everyone gets, what's it called? It was it, like at least five minutes um, in your like facilitator time, which I think you guys already do this where it's like you tell the people that they have less time than you actually give them based on the, um, um, like the amount of time in the meeting. And so doing something like that plus sort of um, making it more loose kind of like she I think she has this thing where she says like if people have their cameras off if people need to like go pee if people just need to be human during the meeting kind of establishing in the very beginning that that is okay um, and doing a lot of like very very small um, very there's a lot of like small nuances to it that which is why I was like I need to finish reading this because it seemed like she was just trying to ground the space in everything that you do here is okay. And um, you can't do this wrong, which I think is like a very helpful um, way, but it's also kind of hard to have people really believe that and buy into it. So there's like all these like tiny little changes you make to the meeting so that people understand that it's like a brave space and not just a safe space. Um, but yeah, I think the book Emergent Strategy, she talks about it, how like everything's a fractal and how if we want to build, it's like, if you want to build larger systems, you need to start from the very like smallest relationships that you have with people. Um, and like building, like, as you said, many people start movements within the same patriarchal frameworks that they are trying to dismantle and it doesn't work. Um, and so she was like, if you want to start, you have to bring in that like council, that village mentality two things from the very beginning. I love everything you were sharing. That's fantastic. I'm not gonna respond back because there's all the hands up. So I will send it to Justin and then Mark after. Hey y'all, I'm Justin Joseph. 
uh, yeah, I uh, really appreciate your perspective and just your 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 vibe. It's great. <laughs> uh, and and Reiki, I, I guess what I was kind of wanting to check in with is, yeah, I can really respect the progression. I think you kind of started the presentation off with this idea that like where we came from to where this is 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 evolution and growth. <laughs> um, and I can actually look back and see how different organizations from Samara to to RE to I guess you know and everything kind of happening in between. Uh, and a lot of the kind of seasonal changes have been explorations or experimentations on the importance of having inner spaces, outer spaces, having ability for people to take time off, be well, step away and come back at right times without everything breaking and falling apart and then feeling like there's no there's no room for that. Um, and, and so this capacity and this kind of architectural design that says, hey, not only do we know that this is important for kind of um, like, it's not like a corporate wellness program, right? But it's actually designing into the in, into the DNA of the of what seeds is, is is offering a solution for anyone to pick up and to move that way forward, um, to be able to build a DAO dedicated to healing, facilitating in a way that's true for you, and do a way that has an innate reward system built into it that begins to continue feedback the ecosystem from this new place and new lens, and that feels really meaningful and valuable as an evolution to what we all have been working on and going through and and maybe looking for ourselves or finding our own way to create and, and generate and now it feels like there's like a structural example of that or um uh and built into in, in, into the say the socio-technical infrastructure of seeds itself and that's that feels that feels um yeah it feels meaningful to me and i think i'll probably pause there but i think there's things around samara um re some of the learning journeys we did with you know from eight chakra to we are open circle to to the Delta Gene Keys Delta, we've done so many journeys that have looked at how do you facilitate journeys of healing that allow people to come into a new economic paradigm, do so together as a coordinated group and be able to find ways to be well or not be well, and allow that non-wellness to become well in time. Uh, and, and we've learned a lot of things. And I think that the capacity to bring that here in some right ways, or just kind of speak to the, the um, yeah, the gifts of that and the challenges of that, as far as coordination and facilitation, I think are, are alive in me and I hope to maybe bring that in the, in the next few rounds of communication and conversation. Uh, but yeah, th thank you. Uh, the most perfect and beautiful wisdom and humans are showing up and sharing here. And I hit just yes to everything you're sharing. Thank you. Uh, I do want to double down on what Io and Justin just both brought, which is these are spaces of exploration. Like we, we don't know how to do that. And that's not the point. And we're also creating something new. Otherwise, what are we doing? So with that, we're creating something new and we don't know. We can be very forgiving with how we show up here. Um, and also just showing up when it's right to show up and taking time off when it's right to. Like I've been, you know, spending most of my time lately with my child and transitioning to fatherhood and figuring that life out, which didn't give me a lot of time for seeds um, in the movement, right? And that's exactly how life goes. We want to encourage that where, you know, the corporate world is the exact opposite of that. It's very, you know, dramatic. So we're not doing that. Um, there's more hands up, so I'll shut up and pass it to Mark. Thanks. Um, so as I was kind of feeling into these four quadrants and then listening to uh, Io and Justin, you know, um, that energy and to name that that there there is this modality um, that is is startup culture you know, like like get stuff done that really it becomes default becomes uh you know you know just the the way that that you know uh, that I arrive a lot of times um, there's also where I'm at right now in uh, Cleveland Ohio is at uh, a gathering of uh, you know plant-based uh, eating folks that are looking to you know really create um, those little communities those pods those supports and uh, Colin Campbell and Nelson Campbell are you know did, showed their documentary last night and about building these little pods so what when you were looking at the four quadrants what came up for me as like wow it is the you know like what I want is those little I don't want my farm. I want a fa my farm to have lots of people on it, you know, uh, that, that it is the, the grassroots connections and those grassroots in-person, you know, spaces of sharing and, and, you know, tactile that then you can aggregate. You know, and, and that that theme has been coming forward in the context of, you know, startup methodology and stuff. But that's what my heart heard as I explored myself in each of those four quadrants as what is uh, real for me right now. Thanks.
Beautiful. Yes. Uh, Dandy and then Stephen. Hi. So I'm just taking in everything that everyone's saying and I'm just feeling my way through this. And for me, this is um, it's it's just such a beautiful idea that we're able to hold space for each other to allow things to come to the surface that we're not even aware are bubbling away. And I feel that the most important thing for that to happen is for us to feel safe and held. And that's really to do with being in a community that allows you that space to let go a little bit. And it also takes you into a, a bigger picture of being held by Mother Earth. And that's the sacred feminine that we can be Mother Earth's hands and hold each other while we just let go enough to see what it is that comes to the surface for healing. And then we can resonate with each other's stories and find in our own stillness that way back to our whole selves. And I think that these spaces are just so important for that to happen, that we feel safe to let go and to allow our healing to happen in those moments of stillness, because it is really about your own inner journey but being held while you do that. So I'm really happy to be part of this. It is to do with my my work. I, I do shamanic healing. So um, I'm really happy to be here in this space to, to hold space and to do my own healing at the same time. So it's so important. So thank you. Ah, oh, you guys are awesome. Um, Stephen and then Felipe. And I want to also invite Anna. I see you there. So if you feel so called, put your hand up. Stephen, you're still muted. Thank you, Reiki. I'm so happy to be here. And I, I, first of all, I, I have three things I want to say quickly. One is uh, my gratitude to you for creating this opportunity for us to have a, a healing space within the wider seeds community, which is something that I think that's been sorely missing since I've been involved with seeds. And I think it's really uh, an important uh, piece of community and a place that will allow the seeds community to grow even better than it has in the past. So I just want to express that. Secondly, I'm personally, I'm coming back from uh, just recently leading a memorial event from my mother, my dear departed mother who lived to be a hundred. Um, and I just uh, had to facilitate a family event for family coming from all over the United States to, to be there for uh, honoring her life. And my mother was a healer. So I, I was privileged to have a healer in my life from a very young age and she literally did could heal you. Uh, so I experienced that myself directly. So I think healing is such an important aspect of life. And the fact that we have this here as an opportunity to understand how we do that in our community is just wonderful beyond words. And my final point is that we recognize that we're all pioneers and experimenters in this new form of virtual community uh, that is only possible with technology that has, uh, that has uh, emerged in the last 10 years. And so this is all brand new. We don't know how to do it and we're experimenting and learning how to do it. But these very experiments that we're doing here and that you're doing here, I just think are immensely important to moving humanity toward a better way of living, a regenerative way of living on planet Earth for all of humanity. So I just want to thank you for all of that, and I'll pass it on to the next speaker. I'm the next speaker. Hey, yo, thank you very much for being here. Glad to see new faces and also some familiar faces. Well, I do feel indeed this is a very important space like um, we can see it into or different but especially these two layers where we have the seeds community like the wider community that is somehow called by this by this more 
interpersonal or um, holistic spaces, which is great because as I <laughs> have found, there's many different interests and not, very, not everybody is in the operative mode or they already have a lot of operative things going and they're still part of this ecosystem. So it's important to have these more open spaces. And I also acknowledge that these spaces are very necessary for the people that are actually working together as an operative, like the collaboratory DAO, because there's many things that arises and that I have been noticing, especially in the last six months, that, that we haven't really paid attention or having Even they share this with Is anyone else losing Felipe or is it just me? Somebody remember that it was basically when some because it's reflecting something about the community uh, and it's speaking to all of us. So this this kind of things normally get addressed or don't get addressed actually. And if they get addressed, they get addressed like in a personal um point of view, like how oh, this person is doing this, this is not doing that. And well, basically I, I really cope and trust these spaces will help us to to untangle, decodify these messages from the universe that we can grow together and yeah, be in harmony. <laughs> from the heart. Oh, uh -oh. And that's for all the shares. Thank you all. Um, so this is where it's going to be more of my flavor because I'm facilitating. So this is where I would encourage other flavors to change how we, you know, carry forward here. I already did the introduction to drop in, but I want to do just a brief one before we start the next section. Um, but before we do that, I want to have some invitations on what my flavor might feel like. And there's a few invitations I have. One of them being when someone's speaking, uh, to really, this is a practice, it's our meditation, it's an exercise, it's going to take time, but to really focus your attention on that person as they're speaking, to get out of the mindset that we can sometimes find ourselves in when we're thinking about what we might think speak, because we know if we're going in a circle, we're going to get called on at some point, so we might be spending our time sitting there thinking about our own thing, opposed to actually listening to who's speaking. So what I'm really inviting is for us to just focus on them, because as we do that, they become a clearer channel for what wants to be spoken. So we're actually encouraging it to be a deeper connection as we're focusing on them, we're connecting with them, which helps them be more connected and they share more elegantly to what we might actually need. You know, many communities and cultures speak of this phenomenon, but it's something I'm inviting us to do here today. And to help assist that after each person shares, we'll have a moment to just ground what they said before the next person starts. So this will be always about a 30 second at least time for us to sit there and breathe and just really let the last share kind of sink in before we ask our consciousness to move to someone else. Um, this also gives you time, if you're the next speaker, to then just tap into your source of what wants to be said. And that's the second invitation, that what we speak about here today isn't something we pre-plan. It's not something we're going to you know, think about in advance and prepare slides for and like already have it thought out. What we're trying to really encourage here is that spontaneous you know, healing that can occur when we get rid of everything that's going on in our heads and thinks about what needs to be spoken. And this will be supported by us focusing on who's talking as they're talking, because that gets us out of our head and into what they're saying. And as long, the more we do that, the more we're going to be able to just tap into what we want to share when it comes time to actually speak. So those are a couple of invitations to try to help us get out of our heads into what really wants to be spoken. Um, another thing, and this is something I'll, as a facilitator, stop if I see it. If anything, it's personal. So if your share is about somebody else and you mention them by name, or if you're obviously talking about someone else, uh, I'll stop it from there. I want shares, and in my space that I'm holding, it'll be shares that are from your perspective, because that's how we're going to at least you know, reduce things that could be seen as attacks. Um, and that's not the space that I'm trying to hold here. So if people are sharing and they're like, you know, what I'm healing right now is that Mark called me an asshole and I was really mean of Mark, you know, I would probably be like, hey, you know, let's change that around. And we can say somebody called me something and this is how I felt about it and make it really personal about you and your experience with it rather than calling somebody else in the community out. 
Um, we'll talk about that later, Mark. I love you. <laughs> um, so those are just a few invitations as we get going here. I don't want to make it more than that. And all right, so we'll do it. Before I keep going, does anyone have anything to offer? They wanted me to say something and I didn't. They think something super obvious that I should have said. Um, does anyone have anything? Justin, awesome. Yeah, the last maybe invitation I put out would just, to, I don't know if it's true or not, Ricky, but you know, the invitation to bring your, your whole self. So, you know, um, with those different four quadrants, there's this capacity to really kind of show up as you are. And in a lot of spaces, you have to kind of be worried about employment, worry about your, you know, the, your, your role in the community. Maybe there's a chance to bring, bring your whole self here today um, um, with deep listening in presence and with respect to the other um, as this kind of uh, four, four quadrants of, of invitation in the space. That's just my thing when I add is bring it, bring your whole self. Ooh, yes, and that was, your, your whole self is more than those four circles I showed, but that's an invitation to get closer to our whole selves as we're thinking of ourself in the context of us, our experience, our families, our communities, our bioregion, and the whole earth. Like We start looking at that wholeness as who we are, and that's what we're sharing from. Um, thank you, Justin. And... Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'll have a little session where we can drop in a little bit more. This will be a little bit of a breath work and a slight meditation. And then we'll step into the second section, which is practicing that healing circle. There are 12 of us, and it's such an awesome subsection of our community who showed up here. I always find this is so perfect whenever we do these calls. <laughs> uh, I think this is a such a beautiful diversity of perspectives that showed up here. It's perfect for our first one. I love it. Um, so with that being said, I think we maybe got three or four minutes, but also as Io mentioned, I love that. And I tend to do this anyway. If you're tapping in and you're really inspired and you're sharing, I'm not going to cut you off, but just do understand that we have a boundary of about three or four minutes so that we're not here forever. Um, and then also there's no responses. So that's the other thing. If you want to respond, please reach out to the person afterwards, have, you know, a one-on-one -on -one beautiful dialogue. That's what we're also encouraging here. Uh, but this is just for you to bring what's happening, knowing that you can bring that to the space, be seen without the fear of someone coming in and telling you you're wrong or trying to <laughs> explain something to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop into that space and clear our mind. So this next exercise is kind of about doing that. So let's get in another breath one. Uh, I'm loving the breath today. So just consciously bring your awareness to your body. How is the chamber of your breath holding? So let's stand up straight. Let's open up those lungs or sit up straight, however you feel. Give a little bit more capacity for more air to get into your lungs here. Now we're going to do a variation of kind of like the Wim Hof breath work. So what we're going to do here is about 40 full breaths. And then after the last full breath, you're just going to relax it out and then hold an out breath. And it's not, you know, you're not pressing all the air out. You're not forcing it out because then that's resistance. You're just like a nice sigh with the last breath and you just sit there with the empty lungs and you feel the energy vibrate through your body. And then when your body feels called to breathe in new air, open your lungs as big as you can and take as big a deep a breath as you can and then hold that one and then feel the energy surge through your body and then let it out. And we're going to do two rounds of this. Um, and then everyone put your hands up if you are wanting to share. You don't have to, but if you're wanting to share, put your hand up and I'll go around in a circle and we'll just start sharing. We'll have a gap between each share and we'll get going. Um, and maybe to break the ice, I can start it um, to set the intention too. So that's what we'll do. We'll just move right into the shares after this breathing round. And last suggestion space for anyone to add anything to change before we get going. You guys are awesome. All right, so again, focus on your chest here. Open up your lungs. And we're gonna get 40 big breaths in.
Now, if you're taking that in-breath, really fill your lungs up, expand them out, help your lungs increase the capacity of oxygen and air and life they can take. So when you're ready, we'll do one more round. Now, if you've taken enough breaths and you feel like you've brought enough energy into your body, just a relaxed sigh to breathe the air out. Don't push it all out. Just a nice relaxed sigh and then feel that energy sit in your body. And then when your body is feeling the call for more oxygen, you can actually sit with that call a little bit and just pay attention to it. I found that I've been able to just not take a breath for an additional few minutes, just paying attention to that sensation and not necessarily acting on it right away if you don't feel you need to. But when you do need to, then take in a nice big breath and fill your lungs up all the way again. Feel free to keep experiencing that space as long as you would like to. For those who are wanting to share, please put your hands up and we'll go in order. And again, remember to keep it around three to four minutes. If you go on too long, I will probably come in and ask you to wrap it up, but that probably won't be necessary with all that. So I'll kick it off. Um, I'm feeling so much just love and gratitude for where we're at in this world. And 
how weird and wild of a journey we've been on together and seeing some of your faces that have just been so consistent and how many times we've seen you in so many different environments and the wisdom you've brought. It's just like I've been able to see the dynamism of all of your beautiful souls and it's just so fun. So I'm feeling a lot of gratitude for the beautiful spirits that have showed up here to play and create this new civilization together. And um, what I feel inclined to share today is the last ever, I'll, I'll tell a small story. So a big part of Seeds to me was I was in a very depressed point of my life, my wife as well. Uh, we were being really caught up in all of the really heady stuff of how we're destroying the planet and all the beautiful species that we're extincting. And there's just so much loss and so much sadness we're holding on to as we're learning about all this stuff and getting addicted to documentaries and the like. Um, we just, there's no passion in our relationship. There's no love or inclination to bring in new life because it was almost felt irresponsible. Uh, we did get pregnant at one point because there was a period in our life where we felt really inspired and we did a bunch of healing. We're like, yes, we can do this. And we we're feeling empowered. Uh, immediately after that, the pregnancy became real. Um, and we brought that spirit in in a very beautiful way. Uh, we were like, shit, what did we do? And this was about seven, eight years ago. Um, we're like, we're not in the world that they're deserving. Um, what, we're, how are we going to birth them? How are we going to feed them? Who are they going to play with? Like, what the hell? Like, you know, this isn't right. Um, we ended up doing a ceremony and asked her, and it was a girl who had come in. We know that she was sharing up in her dreams and stuff. Uh, and we asked her to come back later. And she ended up doing that. And she, my wife had a miscarriage on a beach, middle of nowhere. It's crazy. Uh, and that was the moment where we're like, okay, well, we're either going to follow through with, you know, suicide, or we're going to have to do something and create the world worth bringing them into. And that's when we just decided, like, how the hell do we do this? And we kind of dedicated our life to that journey. Um, about a year and a half ago, nope, almost two and a half years ago, we got pregnant again. Um, and it was also not planned. He was showing up in my dreams. One of the dreams he showed up in, I was kind of being his secretary. Um, and then where my logical mind was like, wait, oh, okay, he needs to come in because he can figure this out. So this is after, you know, six years of us trying to figure it out. We haven't done it. Now the next soul is wanting to come through and he's like, hey, you guys haven't figured it out. I actually know how to do it. I'm like, oh, okay, this guy knows how to do it. Maybe that's what needs to happen. So that's what my logical mind thought. Uh, that felt nice to, you know, get rid of the responsibility. Now I don't have to figure it out. He can do it. Um, when we birthed him and he came in, he kept telling us more. He's like, actually, no, my immediate role is to destroy you, um, your sense of you, who you think you are, the you you built up around in the old culture. And so that's been my last year and a half is going through that, um, breaking myself down from the person I was that, you know, old society kind of built up. And that looked like a lot of him just screaming until I got out of my head. If I was teasing on something that wasn't serving me, he would experience it through pain, the pain I was feeling and not aware of. He would manifest and make me very aware of that pain. It's been a year and a half of going through that and unpacking traumas, which is what also inspired me and is why I'm here in these circles, because I know this is a big part of something we all want to go through. And maybe we could go through and learn from each other together. Um, I'm cutting this off short because I'm noticing my time and I want to set the pace here. Um, so that's what's most alive for me. And what's bringing my heart and soul here is how do we, you know, evolve and grow and create that world that our children need together. Um, he's one and a half. He doesn't want to wait anymore. So let's do this. Uh, love you all. And I'm going to pass it to Justin. Actually, but... <clears throat> The other pace we're having is about 30 seconds to transition from one speaker to the next, right? So that we don't have to rush. So you just take a breath here and ah. Justin, whenever you feel inspired, go. way to set the the tone um i um <laughs> i 
thought it had some words, but I know that happened somewhere in there, but it's like a, it's a thing. Um, the reason why I, I believe in seeds is because I've never been in a system where I've learned and grown so much in, in my entire life and have that do it by continuously coming back to the requirement of being responsible for, for my own life in relationship and in service to the whole. And it's been devastating <laughs> because, um, because I, I continuously, and even today, I, I can keep coming back to how, um, how beautiful it is to be alive and how much of that beauty I missed um, um, as I kind of continue to be on the journey of reclaiming it and reflection and review, um, but also in, in, in collaboration and creation for a more beautiful world that, you know, that we build together each day. And, um, you know, I, I apologize. I have an apology to the entire city's ecosystem because, you know, I came, I came in to the system um, coming out of a big, you know, big spiritual awakenings. And so all this, all these things were coming into me and I was all the vision, all the life was bringing me everything, just what I needed. And, and I had this addiction um, that I didn't realize was destroying my life and my relationships and my ability to show up in the world. And then actually being in seeds and the startup culture really fed my belief system that I needed to be that person to do it. I needed to be on 2 a.m. calls and 4 a.m. calls and 6 a.m. calls if I was going to be able to every single day across all the days, if I was going to be the person that was going to be able to show up in the world in service. And I did it. And I watched those videos sometimes and it breaks my heart how much I wasn't actually showing up and how much I, how false I was, even though there's so much love for that being and so much love for that work and so much love for all that was going on. But I was so, um, I was quite lost and unable to understand how to heal and be well in the context of, of working in the world. Um, and, and it's such a dichotomy or a juxtaposition between honoring all that I have done, all that we have done and seeing how, how false and empty sometimes I, I couldn't help but be because I, I didn't know any better. I wasn't able to be responsible yet and watching all the things that I did that were destructive and, um, you know, I, I haven't been on that substance since October of 2022. Um, I've been, I left everything behind in Denver and, and moved out to Guatemala to, to end a beautiful relationship and to, and to begin a new life and find my way. And it's been, um, and probably at times, so like devastating and challenging and hard, but I, I do feel like the season has changed. That my transformation is not complete, but God damn, it's been, <laughs> we we have the edge of a threshold and I'm so ready to be over the side of that and allow for safety and stability and support and wellness to be my guiding light because I, I choose that now in myself and my family and my environments and all the work that I do because I know that it matters and it's work and I, I'm here for that and that's that's what I'm healing from and that's where this journey is taking me and I'm, I'm just grateful for it. Thanks. Uh, oh, thank you, Justin. That was mm. and now another moment. Just breathe. Let flow up, flow. Mm. Just represencing this invitation that is someone speaking, just really connect with their heart, the words that are coming through, and focus on them. And there's so much beauty there. Oh. Um, Ayo, whenever you're feeling inspired, please go. I think Stephen had his hand up first. No? Uh, that's true. However, um, I think it would be really beautiful if we went male, female, back and forth, if we can. Sure, um, sure. So we'll go Ayo and then Stephen and then Dandy. Okay. Um, so I, I feel like I've been in a season for the past two-ish years of um, extreme burnout. Um, 
and I'm coming out of it now, but it's sort of made it clear to me that the biggest relationship that I, I needed to heal, yes, the one with myself, but also the one with the universe, God, Gaia, um, because I kept looking out into the world, similar to Reiki, or Reiki, I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong, um, where you see the destruction uh, and you're like, why? Why is this like this? How did we get here? Um, and especially just even as I got further into spirituality, um, I was more angry actually, because I was like, if there is supposed to be this loving awareness thing, if we are all reincarnating, why do we keep recreating the caste system? You know, why do we keep, why is poverty still a thing? Um, why are so many people suffering? Why is everyone so lonely? How is everyone so addicted? Like what is going on? And it bred in me this very intense sense of hopelessness where I was kind of, I became very, well, part of my journey was getting much more in touch with some of my past lives, I felt. And it became clear to me that I'd lived through, or just like a sense of it, that I'd lived through many catastrophes and that humanity had brought itself to this brink of catastrophe many times. And I was just like, why do I have to do this again? Like, I honestly just sign me out now. I'll come back in hundred million years when the earth has like regathered herself and there's a new species, like leave me out of it. Like I'm tired. Um, and this like extreme exhaustion has just been this weight that's followed me throughout the year. Um, but part of the silver lining was getting into a deeper understanding of all the things that I, all the gifts that I've been given, all the work that, you know, my soul wants to do, that my soul has been excited to do, but not had the chance to do. Um, and falling back in love with life has been this like, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't even say I'm fully there yet. Honestly, I still have to, it, it's like a, it's an in and out, it's a sinusoidal. Um, and, but I think that's good. I think as I grow in awareness, I'm not closing my eyes off to the darkness of the world, it's very present, um, but, being able to see the darkness and not be consumed by it has been this incredible um, journey for me and process for me. And what I've, what I'm hoping I'm at the near, um, the closeout of this season, um, and I can enter the next season with just more conviction um, and more optimism, like a very radical sense of optimism to sort of look in the face of everything that is happening um, and be like, we can change it. Um, so that's that's where I'm at. Uh, oh, and I'm going to cheat and just parrot what you just said about the changing of the seasons and showing up. Like, we get to do that together. I want to share this because it happens so often. And that's, you know, sometimes we go on this big journey and we change who we are and then we come back to our community and they're like, you're not that person. Go back to who you were. Like, we're more comfortable with that person. We have the opportunity to do the exact opposite. As we show up in these circles and as we connect with this global community, show up in the person we want to be in that regenerative civilization. We're there now. This is what it looks like now. When we're in these spaces, we are in the new season. And that does look like a little back and forth as you can show up that, like, that way here. But then everyone here only sees you as that person right? And then they can hold you to that new self that you would like to be rather than who you were. Um, Ayo, thank you for that. Um, there was no responses and thank you for cutting me off and I'm abusing my role as facilitator and absolutely call me out and I will shut up and we can give a space to hear what Ayo said. And Dandy, whenever you're ready. I thought you were going to go to me, Reiki. Even you're absolutely right. The hands were wrong. Yeah. Okay. I have been involved with seeds for four years, and I still continue to be very motivated by the whole concept of seeds. But for me, seeds is a great metaphor. For me, it's the seeds of love that each and every one of us bring into this world as human beings. And the rest of what I want to say, I want to really go toward a visual rather than a verbal uh, expression, because I really 
resonate with Mother Earth very deeply. And I just want to now show you what I see out my window and what I have on my door and just share that with you. And that'll be my the rest of my statement. So I don't know if you can see this uh, on my door. I don't know if you can see that, which is basically Mother Earth taking care of the Earth and pouring sacred energy into the Earth to help us heal. And then right out my window, every day I'm surrounded by Mother Earth. So this is my view out my window every single day, and it's my total inspiration. So I'm just so grateful that there is a seeds movement in the world and that at least some of us are expressing ourselves in a way to help humanity heal itself and at the largest level and that's been my focus i'm i'm just as energized uh about the seeds movement as i ever have been from the day one and i i'm going to continue for the rest of my life so i'll just pass it on to whoever wants to be next After a small moment to just ground in what you shared, Stephen. And then another reminding invitation to just focus on what's being said by each one of the speakers. Just really allowing what they're bringing forward to connect with you. And then Dandy, whenever you're inspired. Okay. Yeah, so um, just really taking in what Stephen just said about connecting to Mother Earth. And as we were doing the breathing today, I didn't know what to expect, but I was surprised as I usually am with the unknown. <laughs> and what came to surface for me was it's okay for me to receive healing. Um, spent a lot a lot of my time being of service to others and showing up to offer my uh, love and I suddenly realized that I do need to receive love as well and to receive healing so that was a surprise to me it was a real surprise because I I feel I have to fix things I have to help people and I have to and I've been so busy doing that for a long time you know not only my clients but my family members and friends and it, it is all I'm always I work for spirit when spirit calls I answer and spirit's my boss so <laughs> I just I appear wherever I'm needed and today I thought I I must come I must be here but I didn't realize that it was also for me to receive and to um, understand that I need to stay in stillness as much as possible to to heal myself so that I know that I can show up better to help others heal too. So for me, I'm really grateful that I'm, that I recognize also that to help others heal, we can only heal ourselves first. And by doing that through connecting with mother earth is always helping me to remember, remember who I am and remember that we're all connected and held with mother earth continual relationship and bringing it back in oneness no separation so um it's just like a spiral for me and i'm also feeling a lot of the love here um so i'm having a moment <laughs> so yeah thank you thank you thank you Thank you. And I that felt a lot better that me not coming in right after someone's done sharing. So that will be the new pattern I'll hold is that I will just let that space be empty and I'm not going to try to fill it and no one needs to stress about it not being filled. I don't see any other hands up. But there are other folks here. So we'll hold space for just another moment and sit in that silence. If we see some other hands in the next few moments, great. If not, we can move into the next section of this.
Um, but in the meantime, we can just marinate in what was shared. Anna, I see a hand up. It's been for a share. Another reminder, just uh, our meditation and practice here is to really focus on the being of who's sharing. So, Cynthia. Hey. It's quite a moment for me to be here today and to see all these faces that I haven't seen in a long while. I joined Seeds in 2021, in the beginning of the year, and very, very quickly, I went very, very deep into doing so much in seeds. And at some point by the end of that year, I realized that I was guiding movements of energy, guiding groups of people and I was not myself in full harmony. And that's mostly why I decided to take a break, which I thought would be shorter than it was. And I spent the year of 2022 completely dedicated to that, to being harmony and to realizing the nature of existence so that I could come from a different space whenever I found myself myself in those spaces that I found myself in, in scenes. And then in the end of the year, last year, this vision of new reality came so strongly. And that's where I'm at today. And the reason why I'm here is because I'm very curious as usual, <laughs> and very interested in witnessing, observing, and participating in this journey of healing as a collective, because that has always been something that I have known as a very inner experience. And so I'm very interested and very excited to be here and to see these old friends so family really and these new faces of new friends thank you
Oh, oh, thank you. And sit here and, and marinate in this beautiful feeling some more until someone else wants to share. And we'll maybe do one more. I won't force out anyone else if you aren't feeling like sharing today, but I really want to leave space here in case someone's just, you do want to share and there's something there, just maybe needs a little bit more of a, more space to come through. So we'll leave that space now. Reiki, can I pull a Reiki real quick and just say something? You're pulling a Justin right now and it's beautiful. Please go. I'm pulling a Justin. <laughs> um, the reason why, one of the reasons why I came to this call and that I showed up was I heard Natalie's call for those of the past to come forward and to support uh, the work that she was doing, that they're doing um, now. And so it's not a call out to Natalie, but there is a desire to to be with her in this space um, um, in whatever way is right, true, and beautiful for her because I think it matters. Um, and her voice and her video and her call, um, as I responded to that and that really brought me here. Uh, thank you for the call out, Justin. And um, yeah, thank you for the rest of you for holding space and being so brave to step up and share your experience so far. Um, yeah. I have currently taken some time away from the seeds. Um, movement and kind of stepped into my own process and really come to a place of um you know like I'm doing I'm doing good and I'm you know doing the practical things um tending to what needs to get done right now like what's priority so it's like eating good whole food, going, you know, getting good sleeps, spending time outside, and then creating like an open space for creativity to come through or for whatever needs my like awareness. And it's <laughs> an unbelievable amount of grief and anger and <laughs> I don't even know where it all comes from and I didn't even want to talk today because I knew I would be exposed and that is probably like ah. Uh, my worst, <laughs> my worst, like fear. And so that's what I keep. That's where I'm at now is asking, like, what is it in myself that I'm so like rejecting? What a part of myself am I like, what triggers, like, why are my triggers so terrifying? Like, why? What is it? What am I so afraid that other people will see? You know, that I'm not valuable, that I'm not smart, that I'm not like fast enough or like quick enough or 
you know, that I'm actually quite mean when I'm angry, <laughs> you know, like, these are all the things that like, I'm like, people are going to see that I'm not the like virtuous, happy <laughs> facilitator <laughs> that, you know, is holding space all the time. And maybe I don't exactly know where I'm going or what I'm doing, but <sighs> but I do know that there is elements within me that are so much <laughs> larger than I can, my identity can even comprehend and that I'm linked into this earth-based life through like the elements of like the water, the, the earth, the fire, the air. And if I lean into like that love and that presence, then <laughs> it makes it a little bit more uh, manageable, a little more real. I woke up this morning with these two sentences just being shouted out at me. Remember who you are and call for assistance. <laughs> and I was alone. There was no one else there. And, uh, yeah, so <laughs> I don't know where these meetings are going um, to go. I don't know how much to contribute, but I would recommend maybe having a dual facilitator, one to offer the practice and the creative space and the other person to hold logistics and time and whatever else needs tending so that there can be kind of the yin and yang flow um, so that there's structure and stability. And, you know, in let's say that like, I have such a trigger, ah, I don't know what to do what kind of support system can I lean into? Do I just shut off my computer and run away and then like get angry about it for the next week? And like, how dare those people? Or does it like get addressed in this meeting? Or is this meeting not the appropriate meeting? Is it like there's an individual who's assigned with that role and they confront people and they, they already hold space for people. And they, you know, like what happens when weird human stuff comes to the surface? And who's willing to take on? That's the other thing about seeds that I've learned is that it's not just the personal stuff. We're here reflecting the human consciousness and the events and processes that we all go through ripple out on uh, massive scales and micro scales. It's, it's, it's a fascinating phenomenon that seeds is tapped into. And so having like people who are aware of that magnitude and, and can clear themselves and clear a container and I think is super essential for the survival of this circle. Otherwise it could potentially become just like a, you know, either like superficial, everyone wants to keep it glossy, rainbows and candy unicorn, or it becomes like a garbage dump where everybody just comes and like, blah, blah, hate, blah, blah, and then that's no good either. So probably over time. <laughs> and um, that's, that's the, um, the integrity that I'd like to, you know, call forth in, in as this beautiful, you know, evolutional space um, comes forth. Aho. Uh -huh. <laughs>
Aho, we love you, Natalie. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. There's another hand up and this space is still for sharing and there are no reflections. However, I'm just gonna presence that I'll respond to some of this stuff that everyone brought next as we talk about the next section. So there's a space for us to unpack this a little bit more. If anyone else that has not shared and would like to share, please put your hand up. And we've got Dandy's hand up, so we'll go there. We'll do one or two more shares, unless lots of hands go up, and then we'll go into the next section. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to reflect on what Natalie was, was saying and feeling, and um, just to put it out there that um, I'm happy to take on a role of be in a container to help people to transform from what they're surfacing with and to give them a lifeline to hook onto. Just putting it out there. This feels like a good spot to share the other intention for today's call and what we're doing here is you know, the gratitude DAO, which is being set up to hold these spaces, is itself a game. The full intention of that game is emerging, and it's emerging as all of us show up and sculpt it. So, Natalie, you're kind of asking, you know, what is the structure of this game other people have, too? Like, we're building it together right now. Um, some elements I want to speak into of what I'm holding as my facilitatorship. When you're talking about those weird stuff coming up, to me, that is literally the point. The old civilization had us disconnect from all those elements. You know, it wasn't productive to work for you to feel your emotions. So take care of that shit at home. You know, like that mentality is the exact opposite of the structure here is the weirder stuff that comes up. Like it's almost a celebration. I, I want to, at that point, you know, parts of me, my heart were doing backflips when several of you were speaking and really tapping into truth. I'm just like, this is what we're here for. And sometimes that truth is crazy, but that's, in my opinion, the game we're creating. Like We're all one. We've created this separation to experience all of it. Um, you know, something that came up right before this meeting, it was, I was remembering a childhood memory where we were playing paintball guns. We were shooting each other with paintball guns. This is what we did as kids. And we turned it up as high as it can go so that we'd be the most pain as possible that we were causing ourselves and each other because it was more fun and more real. You know, like if the pain was more real, it made the game more alive. And I kind of think that's what we're doing. We're all a bunch of children here playing this game called life and evolving into gods. And the more real we make the game is through that pain. But it's not just pain for the sake of it. It's not masochism. It's pain for growth. And when that pain is coming through, that is growth. It is in those tender moments where we are feeling the most vulnerable that growth can happen. And to me, that's what we're here to do and to celebrate and to, you know, move through together. So when those moments come up, it's like, I feel like we could cheer. Maybe we put it part of the game. You know, there's one imagination that the game has badges that as you unlock different emotions, you have a badge for each emotion, just for fun. You know, we're making this into a game for ourselves to do. And if you unlock a deeper element of sadness, awesome. Let's celebrate that. You unlocked a deeper element of joy. Amazing. <laughs> Because the old culture was like flatlining. It was all like, we just want you to be, you know, stable enough to run the machines, you know, not inspired enough to overthrow your power, you know, their, your masters, you know, not depressed enough that you're not working on the machines, like just, you know, flatline. We want no emotion that's happy. So a lot of our structure was kind of built around reducing all of our emotional ranges. So that's also part of the game I see here is, you know, unlocking that emotional range which also comes into a structure of the game itself because we have the masculine and feminine dynamics, which we're all pretty familiar with. The masculine is we need that structure. It's the, the sides of the river that give the river form. Why the feminine is the river itself. And one without the other is useless. 
Without the sides of the river, the water flows too flat and there's no form or structure to it. And without the river, the sides are just sitting there dry and useless, right? Um, so you get the idea that it's both. And as we increase um, our propensity to feel and experience both, they both grow with it. So it's kind of like the you know legs on a chair, if you will. If you're too masculine and not enough feminine, it gets sideways and can fall over. So what we're doing here is we're actually experiencing being deeper in both of the elements of what it means to be masculine and feminine. Not saying, oh, we were too masculine before, now we have to be hyper-feminine. It's not the other side because then that's going to fall over too. So part of this game here is how do we hold the balance between those energies? And when we do, I feel like whenever we get into balance, some crazy emotion is going to come up. That might be happiness, it might be bliss, it might be fear, it might be sadness, whatever, but that is the healing. These are the emotions we weren't allowed to feel growing up and the civilizations we're coming from. So this space is about unpacking that and feeling it. The last piece I'll leave, and then I, oh, I see your hand up, is you know, I'm, I'm bringing just from parroting some healers here, but they're saying emotions really only last seven seconds at most if you're actually feeling them. So if you allow emotion to flow through you, it only lasts just a moment. But if you resist feeling it, if you press it down, if you're so doing it as part of the traumas we have is we weren't allowed to feel it. You know, maybe it was when you're just a child and you're feeling sadness, then your parents would shun you or tell you to go away. And then you would lose that attachment and connection to your parents if you experienced sadness. This is part of mine. So, so many of us probably learn this to not experience those pains because then we'd be disconnected from society. So part of the healing is to reintegrate that. Say, no, like part of it and let's celebrate it is to feel the deeper range of all the emotions. And that is the point. And it's beautiful. Um, but we don't need to get lost to them either. So anyway, um, Ayo, you got a hand up. If anyone else wants to share in this space, great. And then we'll move on to the second part of this. Yeah, I just wanted to, I wanted to say what I usually want to hear whenever I um, get deep into an emotion is just, I see you, I hear you, Natalie. I'm really grateful that you felt safe enough within this circle to share and to expose your heart in that way. Um, and, Every feeling you're having is more than uh, valid. It's so real and it will pass, but it's also, um, it's a lesson. Every emotion is teaching us so much yeah. about ourselves and about the people we interact with. And so continue to feel them. Yeah, if there's anyone who hasn't shared that would like to, there's one last invitation to put your hand up. This is the second round, but we'll send it to Stephen. We've done that a couple of times, but why not? Uh, yeah, I know I said it before, but because Natalie said something so special, I just need to personally speak to her. And I, I know and I will come in with my facilitator role and I really want to stop the responses. Please connect after to do that. But okay. a couple things happen. If we only respond to some shares and not others, then are we saying those other shares weren't as valuable and don't merit a response? You know, so as much as we're really wanting to respond to each other, and that's incredible and beautiful, please do that one on one, which I think will have more impact anyway. Um, and then we also can have a little bit more structure to feel safer in this space. So that's one of the things I'm going to try to hold as facilitator. So if there's something you'd like to share for yourself, uh, Stephen, and awesome. If you want to connect with Natalie after, please, please do. No, I appreciate that. Um, I can connect with Natalie separately. Oh, you guys are awesome. Um, okay, so that's a, a spirit of it. And gosh, that was incredible. And uh, I think that really captured what we're trying, well, an element of what we're holding space for in the first half of these calls. Um, the second half is how we're bringing structure to it. So if we are looking at that yin and yang, feminine, masculine, again, the first one is a little bit more feminine, where we are wanting to get more vulnerable and open up. And it's not really about achieving anything necessarily why the second space is a little bit more masculine and it is a little bit more about achievement and moving forward and creating together. 
So these are kind of a little bit more in H, but ideally they're still fairly balanced. What do I mean by that second area? Let me just be even more masculine, bring up slides. <laughs> um, this is the, the gratitude shares. So this is um, a part of the exploration here is we're creating new economic systems where we can create together to meet our needs. That's how we can really live sustainably in new realities we're creating is if we can be housed and fed and you know drink healing water and all of our needs are being met and how we're collaborating together, right? So that's what we're exploring here is how to create an economy where we're creating things together, we're doing stuff that are meeting our needs and to acknowledge that. So that's kind of the second part of these sessions is the first one is to get into that really beautiful space to heal, to grow. And the second one is how do we build economies that are based on the foundation? Um, so, yeah, I'll pause there. I think that's kind of everything. Does anyone have any feedback on the structure of the gratitude share before we run into it real quick? Or the intention or some beautiful part they feel like I haven't spoken into that's really important? Does everybody here automatically receive gratitude just for showing up? Like even if people aren't speaking, they're still um, holding a space. They are like transmitting, you know, their presence, a signal. And so, you know, I know that like Gil and Kimberly, Charles, they haven't spoken up, but I know that they're holding an awareness. They have something that they're processing internally. So how, you know, how do, how does the gratitude get um, delivered to the subtle? Is there like an automatic gratitude just for showing up or is it only what's expressed verbally? Sure. Um, I think it's up to each facilitator because the facility, okay. So how gratitude works is just like real gratitude. It is when we give appreciation to someone else, meaning each one of us individually has the power to send gratitude. So when you ask the question, does everyone get gratitude for showing up? Well, some of us could feel that way and then they can send gratitude for everyone who showed up, you know, so it's yes and no. Um, and that's what I was going to say. Some facilitators could say, hey, if I'm holding space, everyone who shows up is going to get gratitude just for coming to this space. And that could be beautiful for a facilitator or anyone to do. Um, so who gets gratitude is up for all of us to decide. And that's the kind of what we're exploring here is a fully decentralized process where we each are individually being able to sense in what we're grateful for. And then that's how our economy kind of functions is what we're experimenting with here. So anyone can share gratitude for anything that they're grateful for. That's the point. Um, and it's open for anyone to do. You don't have to show up to these circles to send gratitude. These shirt circles are just a structure for us to, you know, formally go through the process to see what other people are doing because sometimes you don't know and you're not going to have the time to go through the 50,000 channels of discord to figure out what's going on in there for you to be grateful for. So this is also a place for us to know what other people are doing. So as we go around in the gratitude share, we're like, hey, I just made a new video. Maybe you didn't know I made a new video. Now you can be, you know, now you know I made a new video and you can go and watch that. Or someone put on an event you didn't know about or whatever, right? So there's, this is how we figure out what's happening in the movement as well. So it is playing that kind of, um, operational side of building a movement or running an organization or anything of how are we doing things together and communicating what's being done and then distributing value for who's contributing value right so that's kind of what we're trying to accomplish um in this particular space does that make sense slash is there any questions slash any evolutions or changes anyone would suggest and did that answer or resonate natalie Yeah, I understand. Thank the, you. Oh, sorry. No. Who was speaking? I, I was just. It was, it was just Justin. I was gonna ask: Is the gratitude based off of your Discord handle or your Light Wallet name? Um, so, if everyone was to say drop their, what would they be dropping as a username into the chat if we wanted to be able to send them gratitude um, during or afterwards? Oh, that's a really great question. Um, oh, and that's okay. That's a good structure to have too. As you're sharing, as you come up to share your gratitude, you can put in the chat your Discord handle and your uh, seeds name. 
And then let me share, show you how you can send gratitude. And this is the response side. So if you want to respond to the healing circle side, please reach out to someone, set up a call with them and talk to them or meet them in person if you can. If you want to respond to the gratitude side, please actually send gratitude. And I'll share you, show you how to do that real quick in Discord. So let's say Justin just shared. I will come to the Seeds Discord here and go down to the gratitude part right here. I will put an exclamation, which is how you call in the bot. I will do ACK, which is short for acknowledge, because you're acknowledging someone for doing something. And now I will put in Justin's Discord handle, which is Startup Shaman, actually. Startup Shaman of tomorrow. Okay, so he might have put that in the chat, so I know who it is. And then I say I'm acknowledging Startup Shaman for being a shining beacon of inspiration. which you always are. Okay, and then when I send that, it's gonna call on the bot to acknowledge Justin for me and it says it happened. Then what I have to do is I'll go to my grad spot and I've got a bunch to sign because I'm waiting actually until we send a bunch of seeds to the gratitude, which we're about to do. So people actually get acknowledged. And then I will scan this with my wallet. So I'll open up the wallet. At the top right-hand side, there's a QR scanner there. So this is the seeds wallet. And then I will just scan that QR code. And then on my wallet, it'll tell me it worked. And just like that. Okay. Now I acknowledged Justin for being awesome. Um, so that's how you do that. Um, what I do is I do all my gratitudes throughout the month. And then right before the gratitude actually is distributed, I'll come in here and sign it all at one time. And it's really easy. So you don't have to do that every single time. Just remember to do it, otherwise they won't actually um, get their seeds. So then that's when you can put in the message and say all the beautiful things you wanna say, and then they can read those messages and respond and have all that fun. Um, any questions on that process? Or Justin, did that answer your question? Yeah, I'm, I'm good, thank you. And then this is the second part of our game is we're evolving gratitude itself. So the gratitude DAO will be in charge of uh, changing the protocol for gratitude. So um, how is it working? How are seeds being distributed? Is it working well? How many gratitude tokens do people get each cycle? So as we keep evolving this to make the game more connected with how we want it to be, you know, we're the ones kind of stewarding that uh, process. Does that make sense? So I would really want to double down on that, but nothing here is fixed or rigid. We're starting with the concept of we're here to heal together. We haven't really done this before. It's a very novel thing to try to build global communities and go through a collective you know, evolution and healing process. So we don't necessarily know the structures that are best going to support that. So if structures are coming up and they're not serving us, that's part of our journey here too, is to say, hey, that structure is not serving us. Maybe we can change it this way and to always speak up. If these spaces aren't serving us, you leave a call feeling bored and dead and you don't know why you're there. I think that's a powerful signal to then bring that to the next one and be like, hey, you know, these spaces weren't serving me and bring that awareness. Because um, then we don't know and we can't, we can't know if we're not sharing it, right? Um, how we find people's Discord handles is that's on us. So when we're sharing and we're sharing stuff we did, share our Discord handle. When you're sharing stuff other people did, it could be helpful by sharing theirs, you know? And then you can find them in the Discord. Um, and then that's probably, it's just the Discord handles because then they're attached to their Seeds accounts. Technical stuff is kind of boring. I was going to do that all at the end, but it came up now. Um, any other thoughts or questions on this before we give this a run through? Mm, yeah, maybe I would like to know, to ask or like a little quick round maybe. <laughs> Uh, and see how these what you just shared actually will feel it really complements or yeah like have some thoughts of these gratitude tokens and or or yeah like this part if if it feels that it should be part of the focus for starting or actually it <laughs> just like happened maybe like it creates like these different two layers of the same process like uh, if it's the gratitude, something that it should be like more general in in general in the seed space, and and let's say addressed in that space in that more casual open space, and if the healing should be maybe a focus for 
or yeah, maybe maybe just having like quick or not quick standard things like for example, if we invite one facilitator, he might get I don't know three hundred thirty-three seats, but we don't have to speak that let's say, but just just come to these agreements in the people that want to create this kind of more economic value flows frameworks or models, and yeah, and just separate it. I'm just curious. <laughs> Uh, yes, and uh, to elaborate on that, <laughs> let me just take us here. This is the gratitude do. So when we have more structure, for example, there's a facilitator like myself uh, showing up and doing things. That's the first proposal that we actually have up is a role for the facilitator. So this is in pending stage right now for all the new members. So if you want to join this, you can open up this. I'll put the link in here actually. There'll be a button up here that says become a member. You can click on that, you can join. And then this is how we are building the actual structure for the gratitude DAO itself. So I said we can have those badges about different emotions if we want. We can have all the different roles of people showing up here in a more structured way. So the gratitude is the really informal way of acknowledging people for doing stuff. So you can send gratitude for literally anything. Um, probably ideally the gratitude works for the smaller things. Why, if you're doing something like a role, you're really showing up here, you're making a strong contribution. That's what the, you know, the roles and the quests and everything like that is for in the actual DAO. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, uh, and I also would, would like also find the space to actually talk, maybe now <laughs> we are already in this space, but uh, I was wondering if this, if today or when, when we are gonna go deeper on this, but especially in the, I don't know if the question, like what else other people feel like, should we have like a, an operative meeting to, to bring this more like, how do we plan next meetings? How do, who are we gonna invite? Or if there's some people that don't want to facilitate the whole session, but they want, they have ideas, like having two spaces, one is for entering the healing and the other is for preparing or yeah, creating the, the structural container, let's say. Um, awesome question. And to quickly respond to that, and then we'll keep flowing, is uh, I don't know. I'm operating off of the first impulse, which was to have this immediate call, which is what we've done. And then it was going to be at the end of this, I'd ask what frequency we wanted to do these healing circles at. If there was enough excitement around actually being part of the DAO itself, we can set up calls for the DAO. Uh, we're at the very beginning of this emergence. So it's really just, I know this needed to happen. I felt like it needed to happen in my life. And now we're here and you're being part of it just coming together. So I, it, that's as far as we've come right now. There probably will need to be a regular session for setting up the DAO and inviting more healers. And, you know, there's a whole thing that can emerge from here. But it's really whatever we're inspired to do. Um, the people who attend these, if we're feeling called to be a part of this, um, that's, I guess, the last thing I want to touch into and why this starts with healing before the structure is that is, in my opinion, the whole point. We're creating structures that are going to facilitate that regeneration. So that's why we start off there. And then the second part is around the structure building and then actually creating the DAOs and moving into DAOs and bioregional economies and you know land-based villages and all these structures we're building of how we can actually thrive in a new civilization. Those are all informed by our journey towards wholeness and our healing and what's going to support that. So as we're unlocking that journey, you know, it could be up to these healing circles. And after, you know, so many of them and you're really tapping in, you're like, actually, I never really wanted to be a lawyer. You know, what I really love is plants and talking to them and growing food for us. And that's what I love. And if you found that out through a healing circle, then the next step might be finding the Tao where you could be the food forester for a community and then actually start expressing your real purpose um, through these structures we're building. And if you tap into what your purpose is and there's not currently a structure for it, then you might be then getting called to be a catalyst to create a new structure that does support what you're calling is. So I think that's how all of this is gonna evolve is like we're doing the healing to truly figure out what our purpose is, how we're meant to show up in this movement, how we really want to show up, what's going to light us up the most and be the most passionate thing for us to do and bring to the world, and then create all the structure around that impulse. So that's why I think this is really important, especially now, since up until this part of our journey has really been about actually building the tools 
experimenting with them, you know, working out all the bugs, you know, doing this thing where we triggered each other a lot, but we didn't really dive into those triggers yet. A lot of us had to go on that personal journey of growth and kind of come back in. Uh, so I think we're at that beautiful stage where the tools are just getting ready. We can start formalizing that structure. And now it's how do we create a new structure that doesn't just repeat all of the challenges we just left? Which again, in my opinion, is kind of what we were teetering on the last few years is we're bringing a lot of the old stories and just bringing, you know, recreating the old story and new exponential technology. Like, okay. Um, so in order to really you know, shift that, I felt like this space is probably necessary, mandatory to help invite what really wants to come through. Um, any thoughts, reflections, inspiration on that? Okay, um, what I'm noticing right now is we've been two hours and that was the time boundary I was getting to this. Uh, we didn't go nearly as, that's beautiful. It went, it went perfect. I was planning on us being able to get through more, um, but it's probably exactly what this needed. So I'm gonna ask for a quick round of a poll. If we want to go for another 30 minutes and give the gratitude side a try, um, or just do a closeout round where all of us can give feedback on the structure itself. And then we have the next call where we actually try to do a full round as we're a little bit more familiar with the structure and how it works. So if you want to close out today, you can do a heart. If you want to keep going for 30 minutes and try the gratitude side, um, give a clap. I will do the gallery view. Lots of hearts. Um, Alexandra, you just joined, so you're clapping. But everyone who's been here for a while, we've covered a lot. Um, and there's a lot of hearts. That seems pretty unanimous. Um, beautiful, then. Then we will do a closeout. My closeout is, again, this was the inaugural one where we were talking about the structure, the intention, what we could create here, like this impulse to step into a new civilization. What does it actually want to look like and feel like? Um, I think that's the stage we're at. So we've kind of built these tools, we're ready to play. Okay, what does that game look like? Who do we want to be in that game? How do we show up in that game? And then this is kind of the invitation here. So that's kind of my closeout. I'll to give a final one at the end, but now I want to hear any feedback, thoughts, feelings, inspiration. Everyone's got maybe a minute uh, or two to share anything they would like um, as we close out. And if you have nothing, just say one beautiful word that you'd like to bring and leave it at that. Um, so put up your hand. Uh, Richard, you got a hand up. I'll send it to you. You are still muted, so unmute yourself and please start over. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's just been an awesome experience to be part of this. I haven't contributed much, but um, really for everyone who's shared so deeply, so appreciative. And also to, to yourself and the work you're continuing to do here. Uh, in this forum is is just incredible. Um, this uh, this movement is is so essential. I th I'm sure everyone realizes it subtly, otherwise they wouldn't still be here. But it it really is so so important. And I just wish there'd been more people on this call. Uh, I know the seeds is a is a big group, and I don't know about the history of the trauma that the movement itself has been through. But um, it seems to me that it, what you're doing here is, is so important to take it to the next level. And it, it would have been good to have seen more people here who'd been more closely involved in, 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 the, in the process so far that has thrown up issues. Um, because I think ego and the, the role that ego plays in these organizations, especially organizations trying to do things in a new way like this is so important to, to bring to the fore. And, and this is the forum. So hopefully there'll be more people um, going forward and just thank you to everyone again. Oh, um, thank you for that. I'm gonna do the man woman thing again. Uh, so I'll send it to Dandy and then Steven. We'll go from there. Thanks Richard. Uh, okay, so um, I'm thinking that this is a really good idea because we're bringing practical tools in a framework which is masculine and we're also holding that wonderful soft sacred space which is feminine and from my own experience you can never avoid your stuff you have to deal with it one way or another you're going to meet it somewhere down the line so better that we do it together you know we're stronger together 
And just by being here, showing up, we're present. We're present for each other. We're not alone. And when you're not alone, you can get through anything. So just putting it out there that, you know, when we're together, it's time to heal. Let's do it. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Then... Yeah, I just want to say that there is a lot going on today in the resurgence of the SAGE movement. And uh, one of the things that you see here today is the the insertion of this new uh, concept of healing, which has been missing in the past from the SAGE movement. So that's a very, very big deal. I think we can get much more participation in this by publicizing this in the SEEDS newsletter, which comes, which comes out every month. There's 4,000 SEEDS members who actively receive this every month and, and respond to it. So uh, there's a lot going on here. Uh, I just want to say, Reiki, that I my word for uh, what happened today is exuberance and gratefulness. Uh -huh. Uh, a quick response on the attendance. We are two hours in, and I feel like I just got the tip of connecting with all of you. So synchronistically, this is the perfect attendance, and the diversity of people who showed up, I think, is also perfect. Uh, so I, I'm glad not more showed up. I wouldn't have known how to handle more people. We've had more breakout rooms. And um, also, I feel like we need more facilitators to grow this. So that's the other thing is I'm not intending for me to be the facilitator that's holding this whole space. And that's where everyone's showing up to. That's I don't think that's going to work. Instead, I'm expecting many different facilitators to hold this space in a lot of different ways that's right for everyone. And that's how we're kind of growing more people. Um, so that's a, just doubling down on that call out. If you're feeling at all inspired to practice your healing, to hold space, to practice that. I want to say practice because we're not expecting there to be perfect facilitators. And that's literally not the point. Um, last soapbox thing. I want to bring in a word about calling in opposed to calling out. So calling out is like, you've done a wrong. I've seen you be a bad and I want to shame you. I'm not saying that is calling in is I see a higher part of you that you want to express. And I see it very obviously because I'm a different person and we see everyone's things way easier because they're not our shit. So I think calling in could be a part of our culture where we're seeing another way that someone could show up, probably what's going to be better for them. We can call them in. So when I was disrupting people and I said, you called me out, actually, she was calling me into my higher self that's in alignment with what I agreed to do. Um, so I, I wanted to bring that in, that we are here to call each other in to our highest selves. And that's part of the thing as well, of course, to step out of feeling like a trigger is an attack on us, to a trigger is a gift to help us grow and heal, which is why we're here. Um, so I wanted to weave all of that, send it to Justin. And again, if you want to share, please put your hand up. Is it cool? I have a call. So can I give this call real quick? It's like maybe three or four minutes, but it, uh, I'd be happy to read it here and it feels very true to me. Um, cool. So I, I generate this through the lineages and heritages and transmissions of block base and gene keys and we are open circle of Samara and Seeds and the Institute of Applied Multidimensionality of the Presidency Institute and Colonel and many more. And I write this using the words and voices of Yaming Dewan, Ra Uruhu, Herman Hesse, and Martin Luther King Jr., as well as Otto Sharma a little bit. Um, so <clears throat> give me a second just to breathe and go. <clears throat> you know, I, I humbly offer this call to all, including this self. We are convinced that the journey to get on the right side of the world revolution requires a radical rebirth of our systems and principles and values. We must rapidly shift from an egocentric to an ecocentric civilization. We must transform our ways of being and doing from the inside and out into the world. There comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe nor politic nor popular and that is correct beyond any measure of conscientiousness. A time when one becomes conscious of the possibility of choosing to love all of humanity, to love the body in all forms, to be one with universal love and to genuinely love oneself. So I, we humbly accept and choose to take our position in the world. 
we choose to fulfill our unique role in life and experience all the beauty of what it is to be alive on this earth at this time. You know, there's nothing except fear that keeps us from the pursuit of harmony, unity, peace and love. The fear of owning up to ourself and the vast unknown within ourselves. Yet we are here on this earth to discover within ourselves everything we ever thought was outside of us. We can learn to hear the mysterious innate harmony of the universe and the totality of all life in our very own heartbeat. With every breath, we can become more aware and less afraid. We can choose to trust the world and we can choose to love ourselves. We can each share our unique consciousness and mold a more beautiful world from the bruised hands, hearts, and minds of our humanity. We can dream, generate, and manifest that more beautiful world that heals the whole through loving ourselves together. We can find a sustainable path to satisfaction and joy through no more than the harmony of the few things around us, our own existence, and a feeling of contentment and well being that needs nothing and accepts everything as it is. We still have a choice. Do we choose to live better with ourselves, with others, and with nature or not? It's as simple as that. A choiceless choice that can drive out the darkness and hate with light and love through inner peace and outer unity for a more harmonious planet. <clears throat> now, love is all I see. Love, oh love, I am free. Love, oh love, free I be. Live and flow as far as I can see. Carry me forward so I become we. Love, oh love, I am free. So be it, so it is, Oos. Thanks. Love, oh love, we are free. I love you. It's beautiful. Um, I want to invite a couple more hands if anyone else would like to close out. Uh, then I'm going to call on one more person and then I will close this out. I want to call on Alexandra. I haven't heard from you and haven't seen you. Also, Jill, if you want to, you don't have to. Totally cool. Uh, if you accept it, put your hand up and then. We'll go I just, um, I'm sorry I ran late, but um, I had another call. So I just wanted to pop in and feel the energy. And then I hear Justin delivering a beautiful message. So I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jim. Yeah, so earlier I was going to respond to Natalie. There's a, a quote that's so simple that I love that um, sometimes the most personal are the most universal. And then something weird happened to me that no one here will experience is that years ago, I was in a car with a friend and a dog, he was driving and a dog ran out in front of us and we swerved and he said his heart was beating like crazy. I told him mine wasn't because I just got a new pacemaker. And right now I'm experiencing something that's rare to me is my heart is racing. The first half of my life, my heartbeat was set at 90 beats. And mainly then about 20 years ago, I, I started getting new pacemakers where my heartbeat could change. But for the most part, it has to be physical. And so right now I actually feel a computer and a machine fighting against the human because it's a fluttering heartbeat that's not normal. So that's the, my matrix literal thing that through the years, 
has not been that extreme in years, but right now it's a weird feeling. And so now I'm just calming down. But normally um, I ebb and flow with sometimes getting nervous, sometimes not. And it's just weird nervousness that's coming up. And now I'm settling down. The computer is calming down. So that's my that's my check in and check out. That is so beautiful in so many ways, like the biology resisting the technology to break free and help us connect with our emotions and life and love and heart again. Oh my God. Okay. Well, that is well beyond any way I could close this out. So unless anyone's feeling super inspired to share, maybe. Oh, damn it. There's one more technical thing I have to do. Um, I love you all. Uh, at the end of this, we get to choose what pace we want to keep going. Um, so when do we want to have the next one? Gratitude happens every lunar cycle where it gives it out. So there is a pace that we do this monthly with every lunar cycle. Um, or we can do it more common. So if you're feeling like this is incredible, we need to be doing this weekly. Um, that's one side. So if you're feeling more often than a month, that's one side. So we can do a, you know, a heart if you want to do it more often. If you would like to do it um, once every lunar month as a common pattern, we can do some hand claps. We got 10 of us here. I think we might be able to find a pretty good signal of what we're aiming for here. Um, Kimberly, you got your hand up? Yeah, this, I'm sorry I haven't contributed much, but I have really needed this space. So thank you so much for doing this. Um, one of the things I'm battling with is um, it's probably one o'clock in the morning here where I live. And so I like the idea of can we find particularly some Indigenous healers here and I can connect to there, but maybe we could be looking some other time zones as well that works for others. So. That's my main thing, yeah. So I'm happy to, whatever time these are going to be on, but I'd like to see others come and, yeah, I know I know this won't work for, for, for others where I live. But thank you again. Thank you. Then to technically close this out, um, yes, more time zones, more languages. So that's the other facilitators I'm really calling on is to get at least one in every language different time zones. So that's, you know, technically where, where the facilitation is really going to come in handy. Um, for this time, my facilitation, I saw a bunch of hand claps. So I will do this every lunar cycle once a month um, at the same time zone. So the same time zone will repeat once a month. You can show up to this space. Awesome. Highly encourage us to make more of these spaces, doing them at different frequencies and different contexts. You know, so each DAO could have their own gratitude circles and gratitude works for all of it. You know, again, you don't even need to show up to a space to send gratitude so we can start distributing, you know, our, anyway, I'm not going to end with that. You guys are fantastic. There's so much shared here. Holy, I just, yes, thank you for this. This is, oh, it was very nourishing for me. So this is really feeling my, feeling, feeling, feeding, nourishing my soul and what I was hoping to get out of this. So thank you. Um, if there's nothing else to share, then I love you all and I will see you all next month or probably sooner. Then feel free to unmute yourself, make whatever noises for exit you would like to. And Thank you so much. Nice to see you, Gail. See you Bye. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye Nas. Good night. <laughs> Good day. Thank you all. Thank you. Ah.